what is going on travelers in today's video we are going to be going over a build guide and damage showcase on kujo sar we're going to be looking both at her support capabilities and as a main dps so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it Now, Sara is a buffer and support unit in Genshin Impact, but she has a lot of really cool capabilities within her kit, so let's go ahead and break it down. So for her talents, her normal attack Tengu Bowmanship, she performs 5 consecutive shots with the bow. Now, the damage multipliers for a normal attack are really low, so I don't really recommend doing a physical damage build for a main DPS. I'd much rather go Electra with her, but as a support, you're not going to be worrying about this. So, as a support, you can leave this at level 1. As a main DPS, though, this should be one of your main priorities. Now, for elemental skill, Tengu Storm Call, she's going to teleport back rapidly, and with this, she'll gain Crow Feather Cover for 18 seconds. And when she does a fully charged aim shot, Crow Feather Cover will now be consumed, and it will leave a Crow Feather at the target location with an icon that you will see on the screen here. Now, Crow Feathers will trigger Tengu Dry Ambush. After a short time, it will deal electro damage, and it grants the active character within the AoE an attack bonus bonus based on Kujo Sara's base attack. Now if you look here the damage multiplier isn't all that high but you really want that attack bonus ratio with this and attack bonus duration is 6 seconds cooldown is 10 seconds for this elemental skill. So this is really good in a sense but it can be kind of clunky to play with it. Now constellations do make it better because you're going to have to retreat and then aim at the ground and you're not going to really hit an opponent with it unless the opponent is really close then switch to your main DPS to get that attack bonus ratio. Now for Elemental Burst, she casts down Electro Damage on the target, dealing AoE Electro Damage to it. Now this is going to separate into 4 consecutive shocks going outwards from the center, dealing more AoE Electro Damage. Now when you do this, the active character within that AoE of the Elemental Burst will gain the same attack bonus that she gives with her Elemental Skill, Tengu Storm Call. So this is kind of a better way to get that attack bonus. It's going to have the same effect as if you were going to be using her Elemental Skill. Now the damage multipliers are really good on this elemental burst cooldown is 20 seconds and the energy cost is 80 it is a bit high so you are going to want to run her with a little bit of energy recharge now for her first passive immovable will while in the crow feather cover state provided by Stengu storm call the aim shot charge times are decreased by 60 percent this is quality of life passive it just grants you a charge attack faster in a sense to get that attack bonus for your active character quicker before an enemy does attack you and knocks you over for her other passive decorum when her elemental burst hits an opponent kuchasar will restore 1.2 energy to all party members for every 100 percent energy recharge she has this effect can be triggered once every three seconds I get it you want to build her with energy recharge for that attack bonus so that is cool in a sense if you're running her as a support not as much as a main DPS but all in all it's not that much to be honest it's kind of just an okay passive. When Tengu Jirai grants characters attack bonuses, either from her elemental skill or burst, and it hits an opponent, the cooldown of Tengu Storm Call, her elemental skill, is decreased by one second. This effect can be triggered once every three seconds. Now, this is good to reduce that cooldown for the elemental skill to be more fluid in your rotation. Her C2, which is the one I highly recommend you get, Dark Wings. Unleashing her elemental skill will leave a weaker crow feather at Kujo Sara's original position that will deal 30% of its original damage. Now, this is amazing because now you no longer have to charge attack with her at all. You can use her elemental skill and swap to your active character, your main DPS, your main carry right away to gain that bonus attack. This is such a good constellation. I really wish this was more embedded in her kit rather than in a constellation, but it is what it is. For C4, the number of Tengu Jirai Storm Cluster released by her elemental burst is increased to 6. So now, so now you're going to be able to hit more opponents or up to 6. It's an okay constellation. The biggest constellation that she has is C6. The electro damage of characters who have had their attack increased by Tengu Jirai has its crit damage also increased by 60%. An amazing buff not only to herself if you're running her as a main DPS, but to your other electro unit. 
Now for support Kujo Sar, you are going to want to run her with some ER, so a 2 piece ER, maybe 2 piece 18% attack percentage or electro damage, but you can also run her with a 4 piece noblesse oblige that to further buff your main DPS as it's going to buff the attack of your party after you use her elemental burst. Now for main sets, I would run her with energy recharge, electro damage bonus, and crit rate crit damage. And then for subsets, I would highly recommend some ER or even some EM if you choose to do that. Now, for a main DPS, however, there's a lot of two piece, two piece options. 18% attack percentage is good, some EM is good, and electro damage is great as well. You are going to want to run it with a bit of EM since Denjo is the best reaction for electro main DPSs. You are going to be wanting to do that. So, in a sense, you can use the four piece Wanders to pay for that charge attack damage bonus and also some EM or the four piece Gilded Dream set to really get more EM into her kit. But as you can see, I will be running her with. With the two piece attack percentage and a two piece elemental mastery set, as the subsets really have a lot to do with it to get that really great crit rate, crit damage. There are a lot of units that will buff her EM in this game, so you don't have to worry about that in her initial build. Now for her weapons for a support Kujo Sara, I highly recommend the Sacrificial Bow. This is really good because it has a high base attack and she gives off the attack bonus based off her base attack just like Bennett. It also has energy recharge so it's going to allow you to get some more ER and also the passive is really good because you might be able to do this skill twice. The Falvenius Warbow is actually a really good bow on her as it's going to give you a lot of energy recharge and some more energy particles due to its passive. Now if you did play the Chasm event, the Fading Twilight is actually a really good option for her with the high base attack energy recharge now the only five star option for a support kujo sara is going to be the elegy of the end with a high base attack a high energy recharge subset and the passive is going to further buff your team you cannot go wrong with this weapon now for a main dps kujo sara there are a lot of options that you can use with her now i really want to talk about the moan's moon it has a high base attack attack percentage subset and she needs a lot of energy for her burst so the passive is going to be quite good on her now the Ibis Piercer is another event weapon that is really good with her. It has a really good base attack, attack percentage substat, and it will increase your elemental mastery with every charge attack that you do with it, max two stacks. Now a craftable option for her is going to be the Prototype Crescent with a really good base attack, attack percentage substat, and a passive that is just amazing for her main DPS kit. Since you are going to be charge attacking with her, you're going to hit opponent's weak spots, gaining that attack percentage increase. Now from the shop, the Black of Warbo is another great option with a crit damage substat this time, and it offers an attack percentage increased due to its passive. Now for 5 stars, she has really good options. The Almost Bow is really good with a high base attack, attack percentage subset and increasing that charge attack damage. The Polar Star is an okay weapon on her with a crit rate subset, a really good base attack. You are just going to have to weave in some normal attacks to get the full advantage of her passive. Now, one of the best options for her is going to be the OG Skyward Harp. It is just an amazing weapon on her with a really high base attack, a crit rate substat, and also you're going to get some crit damage from the passive. Now here is my Sara with 2187 attack, 136 elemental mastery, 76 crit rate, 210 crit damage, energy recharge at 116. Now for the party that I'm going to be using for a main DPS Kujo Sara, Zhongli is going to be the shielder and he's also going to shred the resistance of enemies, Nahid is going to be the dendro applicator and EM buffer, Kazu is going to be the VV shredder. Alright without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the damage showcase. One with wind and cloud. This creature is the temple of wisdom. Solidify. No turning back. Flash. Memory, 
There you have it, a main DPS damage showcase on the Tengu Kujo Sara. Well, I hope you liked the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. It will mean the world to me. And I do stream most nights on Twitch. So follow me on there, and I'll see you on my next video.